probability density function, it ranges from negative infinity to infinity. So if you are given a range A to B, it means the range from negative infinity to A and the range from B to infinity is what is now defined, always defined by zero otherwise. That is why sometimes they will give you that. A continuous random variable X defined by probability density function f of x is equal to, then they give you what defines that function, isn't it? They can really say this function f of x is defined by maybe exponential, maybe two exponential x between the range, between x in the range 1 to 2. Then here they are writing 0 elsewhere or 0 otherwise. Are you seeing that? Now when they put 0 elsewhere or 0 otherwise, this range A to B is what is defining the range of this probability density function, meaning x is in the range A, A to B. But the whole range of a probability measure is supposed to range from, from negative infinity to infinity, so that when you integrate, you get negative infinity to infinity of the continuous of the probability density function, then you get the whole range of probability measure, which is 1, isn't it? Now, if you look at this, we are now having a definite range from A to B, meaning this one, if you divide it, you'll find it is from negative infinity to A, f of x dx, then you continue from A to, to your B, f of x dx, then now from B to the end infinity of f of x dx, isn't it? So they are saying, this probability, the range which is given from A to B, is giving you 1, so it means this and this, if we integrate, we get 0. So that is what is meant by 0 otherwise. Meaning anything which is not defined in that range is 0. It's outside the whole range of that given continuous random variable. So, when just like you are dealing with the discrete random variables, that is just an explanation, when you are dealing with the discrete random variables, you know statistics is dealing with the discrete random variables. Those are variables which you say summation. Are you seeing that? But when you come to probability, they are mostly dealing with the continuous random variable. Meaning, if you are looking for something like a mean, you know, mean with the expectation of the mean. When you mean is if you have a random variable x, let's say this x is a discrete random variable, isn't it? It's, it's, a, it's a discrete variable. So if you have a variable x denoting the data, then the mean will be denoted by x by the name. And we said the mean is given by summation f of x over summation of f where f is the frequency of each and every value in that given sample, is name. So here, this is now for a case of a discrete random variable, uses summation, but a continuous random variable uses integral. Are you see that? Meaning, if you want to get the mean in expectation, the mean x bar, according to expectation, is given by expected value of x. Meaning, this mean x bar is the same as is the expected value of x. So, if you want to look for the mean of a continuous random variable, the expected value of x, you simply integrate. So, if it is x, it is x f of x dx. Now, this is what I mean. You can see here the frequency times x is uses summation, but this one uses integral. So this is just the same as fx. Do you see that? So continuous is using integral, discrete is using summation. Is that okay? So if you're looking for the mean, it is x times the probability density function. That is expected value of x. Then if you now go to what is now expected value of x squared. The expected value of x squared, you integrate within the whole of that thing, now we are using x squared, isn't it? Yeah. So it is now x squared f of yes. f of x dx. Are you seeing that? Yes. So if it is x cubed, then it is going to be a product of x cubed and the, and the probability density function. Are you seeing that? Now, if you look at this, you see how the mean is defined. Now you can recall the variance. How did we define the variance in a discrete random variable. So the variance in discrete random variable was given by was given by the summation of f of x squared over summation of f minus summation of fx over summation of f squared. Meaning it was this minus the mean squared, isn't it? Are you seeing this? Now if you look at this, when you are getting for the expected value of x, it is x times 
the probability density function. When it is x squared, expect the value of x squared, it is x squared times the probability density function. Are you seeing that? So it means if this one is this one is now the mean f times x is the expected value of x. Meaning here, f times x squared is the expected value of x squared. Are you seeing? So it means this is the expected value of x squared, then it is minus, then what is inside here is the expected value of x, and that is the expected value of x is the mean, which has been squared. Are you seeing how to denote variance with the expectations? Are you seeing that? So the variance is simply expected value of x squared minus the mean squared, because the mean is the expected value of x. Are you seeing that? So it means when you are looking for the variance, when you are looking for the variance of a continuous random variable, it is simply the expected value of x squared minus the mean squared. So this is discrete, that is continuous. So it means this expectation is used, it is the general for both the discrete and continuous variables. So the only difference is that the continuous variables are using integrals, the discrete variables are using summations. But the definition of the variance and the mean are the same. The mean is the expected value of x, the variance is that, is the expected value of x squared minus the mean squared. So that is why we we are using the general definition of the variance because the expectations give you the general expectation the, the definition whether it is discrete or continuous it doesn't matter what matters is that is the definition of the variance isn't it so it means when it is discrete you substitute it with the summation isn't it yes. when it is continuous you substitute it with the integrals are you seeing that are we together so having seen how to get the mean and the variance, so this is the mean. Having seen how to get the mean and the variance, the next thing, because we have to define all the measures of location and dispersion the mean, the variance, the median, the mode, and all that, isn't it? Yes. Are you seeing that? Yeah. So we've now seen how to define the mean, how to define the variance. Now we want to see how do we define the median, isn't it? Yes. How do we define the median? The median. Now, you know the median is the minimum value, the value in the center, isn't it? Yeah. So it means if this continuous random variable was starting from this point A to point B, for you to reach the median, the whole range of this probability measure is supposed to be what? Yeah. So it means for you to reach the median, it is it is going to be halfway of this one, meaning median is at this value of half because it is starting from zero and ending at one, the only range of probability measure, isn't it? So it means median, median is a halfway. Are you seeing that? You see, if you integrate the whole probability density function, if you integrate the whole probability density function, you are supposed to get one. Are you seeing that? So it means, well, here we don't have this. If we have A is A and A is B, for us to read the median, we should reach the value we should get. One means we go through the whole of it, isn't it? So for us to read the median, it means we are integrating from the first value, which is A, up to the median value, and we are supposed to get a half, because the median value is giving us halfway. One is the whole range, isn't it? But now if you get a half, it means you are in the middle, and that is the median. Do you see that? So for you to get the median, it means you are integrating from the lower limit up to the median value, and when you Integrate that probability this function from the lower limit to the median value. You are supposed to get a half because median is giving you a half of the whole range of a probability measure. Are you seeing that? So the median is given by what? If you integrate from the lower class limit to the median value of f of x dx, you are supposed to get a half. But if you integrate from the lower to the upper, you are supposed to get the whole of it. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? So the median it means. You direct from the low class limit to the median value to give you a half of the value, isn't it? But if you reach the end, you get the whole range of a probability measure. Are we together? That is the median. After knowing how to get the median, you see it is the median, the formula of the median in the discrete random variable which you are defining by the lower class limit of the median class plus the median minus the cumulative frequency of the class above the median class over the frequency of the median class times the class interval. That is how you are defining a, medi a median in case of a discrete random variable, isn't it? But now, this is now why we are defining a median in case of a continuous random variable. Are you seeing that? You integrate from the lower limit to the median value 
you are now supposed to get a half of it, but if you get the whole rate, you get the whole rate of probability measure. So, are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. So, having seen, it is this media which was so, showing us how to get the quartiles, the deciles, the percentiles, isn't it? So it means, when you are dealing with the, with the, with the quartiles, there was the lower quartile and the upper quartile, isn't it? The percentiles was out of a hundred, so this value is what you use to substitute, isn't it? Now, how do we now get the lower quartile? How do we now get the lower quartile? Because we see it is the same formula of the median in the discrete run in the, in, in the discrete run of variable which was giving us those ones. So if you're looking for the lower quartile, it means it was a quarter end. So where this this value for the median is what you are substituting in a quarter end, isn't it? A quarter of that value. Now it means if you integrate from the lower class limit, from the lower from the lower limit to the lower quartile q1, isn't it? You said you can use q1 to not the lower quartile. So if you integrate up to the lower quartile of f of x dx, you are supposed to get a quarter. Are you seeing that? Because the lower quartile is a quarter. If you integrate up to the median, you are supposed to get a half. If you integrate up to the end, you get the whole range. Are we together? So it means after the integration, you will be integrating, then if you substitute that value, you're supposed to get your lower quartile value. Are you seeing that? Are we together? Then again, if you move to upper quartile, how do we get the upper quartile of a continuous random variable? Meaning from the lower limit to the upper quartile, Q3. So you can say Q, Q2. So that the media we just define with the M. Isn't it? So if you integrate from the lower class limit to the upper quartile of the function f of x dx, upper quartile was 3, you are supposed to get 3 quarter. Are you seeing how to get these things? So you are supposed to get 3 quarter. So it means when you have the upper quartile and the lower quartile, you are now getting that, that interquartile range. Are you seeing that? The interquartile range. So how do we get the interquartile range? So the interquartile range is the, is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Will give you the interquartile range. So if they ask you the interquartile range, it is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Now, from the interquartile range, is now where you get the semi-interquartile range. Semi means a half of the interquartile range, isn't it? Are you seeing that? The semi inter the semi interquartile, the semi interquartile range. So the semi interquartile range is now the quartile range, which is upper quartile minus lower quartile, divided by two semi. It's a half, isn't it? That is the semi interquartile range. So from the semi interquartile range is sometimes referred to as the quartile deviation. The semi interquartile range is sometimes referred to as the quartile deviation. So in the measures of location, we have the quartile deviation. The measures of dispersion, we have the standard deviation, isn't it? You see that? So the semi interquartile range is given by that. So we've seen how to get the mean of a continuous random variable. We've seen how to get the variance of a continuous random variable. We've seen how to get the media, the lower quartile, the upper quartile, the interquartile range, and the quartile deviation, isn't it? Now the next thing which is left is how do we get that? Because if we now get the variance, of course we now to get the standard deviation. It's just the square root of the variance, isn't it? So the next thing is how to get that? The mode. Are you seeing that? It is how to get that? The mode. So how do we get the mode of a continuous random variable? Getting a mode, what did we say there is a mode? How do we define a mode? It is the, the most frequent data value, isn't it? When we talk about the most frequent data value, it means the data value which appears mostly, isn't it? In that given, in that given problem, whether it is discrete or, or continuous. So when we are looking for the mode in a continuous random variable, meaning we are looking at the point where we are getting the maximum value, isn't it? We are looking at a point where the, the value 
is a maximum. So how do you get a maximum value from calculus 1? Anytime you are talking about a maximum value, you are dealing with the concept of, of the turning point, isn't it? But when you are talking about a turning point, at the turning point, at the turning point, because turning point is either a maximum or a minimum, isn't it? And the mode is defined by this term maximum. So when you are dealing with a maximum value, meaning it's just like a case of a turning point, isn't it? Meaning at the turning point, the derivative of the curve is zero. Are you seeing that? And at that turning point is what will give the maximum value. And that maximum value is the mode, isn't it? So it means when you are looking for the mode, when you are looking for the mode, the derivative is zero. Meaning at the turning point, the derivative is zero. Meaning if you differentiate that probability density function, if you differentiate that probability density function, you are equated to zero. The value of x you are getting is the mode. Because all these x values are there, are what are giving us the mode, the variance, standard deviation, the interquartile range, all that, isn't it? All those are the values of? Of x, because you've been told that, for instance, if you are told that x, if you are given x, is in the interval from 1 to 2. Are you seeing the x values are ranging from 1 to 2 continuous random variable? So if you are looking for a mean, and you know the lowest x value is starting from 1, and the highest x value is ending at 2, meaning if you are looking for the mean, it must be a value between 1 and 2. So if you get anything outside 1 and 2, then you've got a nonsense, isn't it? Are you seeing that? If you're looking for the quartile, there must be a value between 1 and 2 because these are the values of x. Are you seeing that? If you're looking for the mode, it must be a value between 1 and 2. You cannot get anything outside it. Meaning the moment you get anything which is outside there, then it means you are irrelevant, isn't it? Are you seeing that? So the mode, the median, the mean must be between 1 and 2. Isn't it? But that has nothing to do with the method of dispersion, isn't it? You know, the mode mean that those are the ones defining the location. So if they are defining the location and x is starting from 1 and 2, must be within that range, isn't it? But the variance standard division, those are now defining the quartile, the quartile, those are locations, must be between there, isn't it? Are you seeing that? The percentiles, the decile, meaning if you are looking for the, the 10th percentile, see that is 10 over 100. So if you are looking for the 10th percentile, you just integrate from 0. To, to that 10th percentile. If that 10th percentile maybe you denoted by not zero, you, you integrate from A, you integrate from your A to that percentile of that, then you get 10 over 100, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Good. So it means when you differentiate the function, the probability density function is equal to zero, meaning at the turning point. That is the maximum value, meaning that value of x you are going to get there gives you the mode, isn't it? And if that, and if you are not able to do that, it is always seen in many cases, so in many continuous random variables, the x values, the mode always concentrate either on the lower limit or on the upper limit. Sometimes if you substitute, you get that value was actually the lower limit or the upper limit. So it is always good. You test the lower limit by substituting it in the function. You test the upper limit by substituting it in the function. Then you check which one gives you the maximum value. And that maximum value is now is what is the value which is defining the mode. The maximum value is telling you that this value of x I substituted is what has given us the, this maximum value. So this x value is the mode, not the maximum value. The maximum value is what you substitute there is defining, isn't it? Are we together? We are going to see how that works out. So let us start with the first example. We see how to deal with the continuous random variables.